The following audio is via a Skype call. Get ready to challenge conventional beliefs about what's possible in creating health, wealth, and happiness. You are listening to Playing on the Edge Radio with Megan Edge. This hit show is providing you with ways of sustaining radical and powerful changes in your life. It is time to open and expand your awareness, accelerate your well-being as Megan shares wisdom, teachings, and experience from a lifelong journey of the heart. Enact the power of radical change with ease and lift your desires to a new perspective. Now, here's Playing on the Edge Radio. Wow, I'm Dr. Pat, and I'm here with my friend and my colleague, and we're going to try not to laugh too much as we're just talking about something before the show. Megan Edge is the host of Playing on the Edge Radio, but more importantly, she's much more than that. You know, when I think about the work that Megan has done, and we don't talk about this enough, so I just want to tell everybody a little bit about this. You know, with the idea of dedicating herself, her life, to the embitterment of others, other women especially, comes a whole list of things that will push you to the edge of change. Uh, Everything from what it is that you say you want to do to how you craft it to do it uh, to that next big thing that is in front of you that you question, you doubt. But in the end, There is a demonstration, as you see, in what she's created with her workshops and her seminars. And by the way, today you're going to hear about the Confident Healer. This is an amazing, intensive, intuitive healer certification program. And we'll talk about that a little bit. But more importantly, it isn't the only thing she does. You know, in looking at her life, I don't know, honestly, don't know how Megan does all this. You know, it's intuitive energy massage practitioners. Think about that, all of you out there right now, that I know are in this amazing field, massage. What if you got to be on the edge of change and thought about intuitive energy massage? What is that? Well, you're going to hear about that today. Why? I'll tell you why. Because we are talking about what it means to be on the edge of change. That's today's show. What does that mean? You know, when you hear the word change, do you just want to crawl back in bed? I don't know. Megan, I love this one. I love them all, but a little fired up on this one. This is a good one, Pat. <laughs> Lovely to see you and to be here. Good morning, everybody. At least morning where I am here yeah. in Victoria, where the weather has changed dramatically. Oh. And we've gone from beautiful, hot summer weather to literally overnight, bam, it's fall. It's foggy. It's rainy. <laughs> it's cold out there. <laughs> I know. I am praying my tomatoes to red. I'm praying. I go out and I talk to my big fat beefsteak tomatoes that took all summer to grow. And I'm looking at this this tomato, it's gigantic, and it's not quite red, red. And I'm saying, okay, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. I know you do. My tomato is on the edge of change. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's such a beautiful way to start our show today. When what we're talking about is change and our relationship with change and how we feel when we have to change or we're asked to change or we decide that it's time to change. And then if we look at something like the weather, for example, then there's the change that is beyond our control or at least seemingly beyond our control. And what do we do with that change? You know, like you said, do we crawl under a rock and hope that it just goes away or... What I would like to see all of us do is that we participate in the changes as they show up for us. Because the bottom line, Pat, is everything changes. Yeah. That's the only constant. Yeah. And, you know, I know the work that you do. You cover the range. But there is a starting point. Mm -hmm. There's, well, some people, you know, call it change 101. But the bottom line is there's a beginning point for our conversation about change. Uh, what is it that you've discovered about that bit, that, that point, the basics of change, the evolution of it, the growth of it? 
For me, the most important part of the whole conversation around change is the recognition that it it happens. <laughs> that despite our best efforts sometimes to dig our heels in and hope that nothing will change, everything does change. And what I've seen in my own life and in the lives of my students and my clients is that when we try to deny that change or prevent those changes from happening, we can get ourselves really sick. We can get ourselves into toxic relationships. We can find ourselves feeling really stuck in our careers and our dreams and our desires. And it it will eventually show up in our body as illness where we then are forced, or at least it feels like we're forced to make changes that feel like they're coming from beyond our control. Those wake up calls that we're going to be talking about later in the show. And within that energy of change, if we can go with the flow or at least be in an awareness of the change as it is occurring for us or to us, then I, then I really feel like we can have change be an empowering experience for us rather than a traumatic experience for us. But even if it has been a traumatic experience for us, we have the capacity, the resilience as human beings to heal the trauma of that change if that was our experience of it. So it's a matter of changing our relationship with change (laughs) uh, as well as acknowledging the growth potential for us as an individual, as a soul, as a species, when we are able to embrace change as a positive experience in our life. And how many of these phrases have we heard, right? You know, how many phrases have we heard? I know I, I, my stepmom, man, she was full of them, right? Everything from, you know, you make your bed, you sleep in it, you know, and so, some of this is relevant to change. It's like can't teach a, 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 an, a, an old dog new tricks or something about, you know, you're too old to change. I mean, how often do we hear that by, That's you know, my- favorite ones do you like that i love that one pat because it's so not true (laughs) i was gonna say (laughs) and it's scaring me right here (laughs) it speaks to this cultural idea we have that change and resilience is something only for the young and that as we age we get stuck in our ways we get conservative we become stubborn perhaps we decide that our way is the right way and there is no other way and we fall into this idea as a defense mechanism for not changing that we're too old to change not enough time what's the point <laughs> you know only have 50 years left to live i'm not changing anything at this point it's ridiculous It's got to be one of the biggest cop-outs to somebody taking responsibility for their lives that I've ever come across. Yeah. What what is underneath that? Because I'm like you. I'm human. I go through it. I mean, look at uh, here I am at a point in time in my life that my friends perhaps sometimes look at and look at me and say, what is she doing? You know, why isn't she like, retiring or I don't even know the language you Mm -hmm. know uh, blah 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 as if what's happening in my life now is not a good thing right right and and so you know what is it about us where we come up with slogans saying excuses for not crossing that threshold of change it's fear Mm. isn't it yeah it uh... The fear of change is, I think, one of the most paralyzing beliefs and experiences that we can have as human beings that we can get ourselves into. This idea that change is scary, that change is always going to be painful or hurtful or take us out of our comfort zone. Well, the reality is, yes, sometimes change is hurtful and painful and takes us out of our comfort zone. But I know that when we get to a place in our lives where our skin doesn't feel like it fits anymore, where it feels like we're hitting our our head against a brick wall and nothing seems to be falling into place for us and nothing that we decide is working out, those are pretty big indicators that it's time for change. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have often uh, looked at what do I need? What do I need to keep growing? What Mm. do I need? Right? Mm. 
every generation that, you, you know, I mean, let's talk about time. You know, when I was growing up, we thought we were in the pinnacle of something here. You know, we thought that what we were doing was so evolutionary, so revolutionary and move forward decade after decade after decade. And the generation of this decade are looking at it as well. Maybe not the same way, but honestly, a smartphone that talks to you and turns on your lights and does your laundry. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. We talk about the pace of change, um, that we're in a, a quickly changing world right now. We have this idea, we talk about the pinnacle of society, that this is the first time in history where change has happened so fast and so rapidly. I don't know if that's true or yeah, not. I, I think it's relative to what the person is experiencing or what the culture is experiencing. But certainly if you look back through history as we understand it and know it, we can find those flashpoints where there was a lot going on at a very fast pace in a very short period of time where cultures and governments crumbled and fell within a generation, even less than that, where new technology showed up that made that possible, new ways of thinking, radical ideas, new religious beliefs and thoughts. For us to, to put ourselves on a pedestal and decide that we are the first people who ever have gone through this kind of change is a bit arrogant. <laughs> well, think about it. Imagine now we're all in the year, I think it was 1879. Mm-hmm. 1879, this guy shows up and he says, look at what I've invented. I've invented light. Yeah. And all of a sudden now, 1879, and this glass thing with fibers in it, or however that looked, is generating light. Can you imagine? See, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about how people thought that was Satan showing up, right? Mm -hmm. But can you imagine that level of change? Yeah. When I think about my grandmother, who died a few years ago at 99 and a half years old, and was born in the 1920s the kinds of changes that she experienced in her lifetime were actually, I think more radical for what a single lifetime than the kinds of changes that I'm experiencing in my lifetime or that my daughters are experiencing. In fact, my daughters are probably experiencing less change technologically. And I know this sounds counterintuitive, but bear, bear with me for a moment because everything that they're experiencing, they've already grown up with the foundation and basis of it. All right. So we went from uh, video to DVD to Netflix in the course of the last 15 years since my old eldest daughter was born. But that's a really short period of time for the same technology to change. And it becomes quite normal for her generation to have the next technological breakthrough because they expect it. Whereas even in my own, my own time, I grew up with a black and white TV, a telephone that you did not take with you when you left the house. <laughs> And there were no answering machines. And then I compare that to what my grandmother experienced with the invention of the car and then radio and then TV and going through world wars along with all of that. And yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's relative to our experience of it, these external changes. I think what's consistent and constant for all human beings throughout all time is how we react to the changes that occur for us, yeah. within ourselves, within our immediate environment, within our immediate family, household. I think and, our you, know, you talk about is- the soul, don't you, as well, though? Absolutely. You talk about change for the experience and the relationship change has to the soul. Let's mm-hmm. take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to explore that. You know, what is the purpose? What is the purpose of change? Does it have one? Well, I think Megan thinks it does. And then the question is, yeah, whose will is it anyway? Is it happening to me or am I the to-er of it all? Stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back. Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on the Tracy L. Clark Show, where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life at 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed 
to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at tracylclark.com. Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio and join Sarah on an adventurous journey to the deeper level of meaning to move beyond today's world of constant change, confusion, and uncertainty beyond the shadow of fear. This hit show explores key concepts such as confidence, values, and attitude in a dynamic way. To learn more about Sarah and her work, visit sarahmain.com. Are you your story? Or can you change your story? Can you change what you believe to be true about yourself and your circumstances as part of your healing journey? What if you were to change your expectations? What if you were to invite ease and cooperation into every day and then step back and see what happens? It might just be easier. I'm Megan Edge, and I hope that you'll join me on my new radio show, Playing on the Edge, Radical Change with Ease, with my co-host, Dr. Pat, on Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to seeing you there. Want to find out more about Megan Edge? Visit her website at meganedge.ca. Ladies, are you struggling with neck, back, shoulder pain, or postural issues? You actually might have a related bra problem. Talk to Maria Monti at the Healthy Bra Company. She is a professional postural therapist who offers custom fitted, custom altered bras in 2,500 size combinations specific to your body type, shape, size, anatomical features, and breast weight. Call Maria today to find out more at 360 815 3205. The Empty Toolbox. Fire it up, fill it up, and flow it up with Meg Thompson. Tune in the first Wednesday every month, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to engage in the three essential F's of an overflowing toolbox. If you are looking for strategies that work and how to implement them, the Empty Toolbox is for you. For more information or to listen to this show, visit MegThompson.com. What is holding you back from living the life you were meant to live? Why is it vital to believe in something bigger than yourself? Are you in physical or emotional pain? Tune in monthly to Vibrant Purposeful Living. Awaken the vibrant life within you with Lou Paradise and Dr. Pat on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Lou's passion is to help everyone experience positive solutions for life. Find out more about Lou with Vibrant Purposeful Living at LouParadise.com. Wow. Hey, everybody. Listen, this is Playing on the Edge Radio. I'm Dr. Pat. I get to hang out with the most amazing Megan Edge. This is about radical change with ease. Today, Megan, you're talking about on the edge. What is on the edge? What does that mean on the edge? And most importantly, you know, how is it that every day of our lives, whether we know it or not, that is where we are. Uh, Before we talk about you know, is is it real or is it Memorex? Is it me or is it you? Uh, Am I actually, do I actually have a choice or not? How can people find out about what I mentioned earlier, the confident healer and the intuitive energy massage practitioner, and also a public forum you've created? They can find out about the confident healer and intuitive energy massage through my website, which is www.meganedge.ca. Uh, go to classes and workshops. There's a whole description, explanation about what these two certification programs are, these two healing modalities that I've created. The Confident Healer is starting in September. This September, the 22nd, is our first workshop. And there are a few spots left. I'm closing registration at the end of the week. So if you're curious, if something is red flagging for you, if you're you're feeling a bit of a resonance with this whole process, this whole idea of stepping into become, becoming a healer, making these changes in your life so you can do this work and be of service, then please get in touch with me. All you need to be able to do is come in once a month personally for the workshops. The rest of it we do all online. So Vancouver, Seattle, Northern Vancouver Island, lots of ways to show up for that 
program. And then intuitive en energy massage, we are offering those trainings throughout the year. So usually once a month, once every couple of months, we do a level one, then we do a level two. And if you want to become a master teacher of this modality, that's a other conversation that we have, but that is one of the levels that we teach as well. So it's all about getting in touch with me, letting me tell you what it's all about, and then seeing if it's a fit. I love it. I love it. Um, you know, today we are talking about what change. We're talking about change. We're also talking about being on the edge of change. And I love the way that you've selected this topic for today, because I think if you were to ask people, I know I, when I look back at my life, um, there have been times that I've been on the edge of change and I've resisted until I just couldn't even couldn't even function anymore. And we understand the resistance to change. We don't understand necessarily where it comes from and why we do it. So let's talk about, you know, whose will is it anyway? Mm -hmm. And what are the purposes, perhaps, for explaining some of the biggies in our lives? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those beautiful wake-up calls. Ugh. When it feels as though things are beyond our control... And it can be an easy uh, response to assume that they're beyond our control, to, to sort of throw our hands up in the air and say, not my fault, not me. I didn't cause any of this. I didn't ask for any of this. I didn't do any of this. I, I think that when we go there, we lose an opportunity to take responsibility for the choices that we've made along the way that have got us to this place of the wake up call or radical change showing up in our lives. And we may be missing out on, on the opportunity to grow from that and to learn from that yeah. and even to know ourselves better within those circumstances. And I'll, I'll share an experience that I had yes. recently where <laughs> out it felt like it was out of my control here in Victoria, the housing market over the last few years has just gone insane and houses that would go for, I don't know, 400,000, 500,000 were going on the market for a million and being snapped up in the day that they went on the market in this area that I live in. It's a very desirable area. So we ended up becoming a part of that experience when our landlady decided that it was time to put her house on the market, our house on the market, the one that we lived in for six years, the one that I moved into after I left my marriage where my girls had grown up. We got a phone call. She says, I'm putting it on the market. I'm renovicting you. Talk about new words. We were talking at the break about making up new words and changing language. Renoviction. Oh my gosh. Is the, is the term that's used when a landlord evicts the tenants so that they can do a quick renovation because you have to have a reason to get someone out of the house mm. uh, and then turn around and put the house on the market and, and sell it. So within a three month period, we went from feeling settled, secure, stable in our beautiful little house to everything being either sold out on the street and us essentially homeless, not in any kind of dramatic real way, but in the sense of we didn't know where we were going to live. Right. We didn't know how we were going to live. We needed a place that would hold my business, my workshops, my dog, our two children, a home-based business, all of that. And it, it would have been easy to go into the panic mode, it would have been easy to fall into everybody's conversation where their attempt to make us feel better was to say, oh my God, this is so awful. It's happening everywhere. And go down that rabbit hole of it's everybody else's fault. Mm. But the way that I was able to look at it was as an opportunity to practice trust, trust in the divine God, goddess, whomever is up there helping us out. I think they're helping us out. Uh, to trust in the flow, to trust that even though I didn't know what it was going to look like at the end, this change was going to be a good thing. Because when I was really honest with myself, the house we were in, it was way too small. Mm. It was much, much too small for the growth that we wanted for our work and our business. Oh, for the yeah. fact that my children were no longer five years old, they were now teenage girls, for lots of reasons. So the universe and my belief system stepped in and said, Right. Wake up call because you're not taking this on yourself. We now have to create a situation that you can't ignore where you're going to go through a challenge. Right. And some days it's going to suck. But 
Sure. It's also going to demonstrate your own resilience, your own belief system, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And it's going to demonstrate how helpful other people are willing to be when you're going through crisis wake up call or change. So wherever, wherever it comes from, whether it's God coming down and saying, this is what needs to happen or the universe or your higher self, your soul's need for change. I believe that if we're willing to approach the circumstances from the bigger picture perspective, as I like to call it, rather than this perspective. Yeah. It, it's a lot easier. Yeah. It's a lot easier to go through these kinds of changes when you can just lean back a little bit or even lean into it with the expectation that something good is going to come out of it, even if you I, don't know what it's like yet. That is that your message is so key, really. Um, and, you know, let me give you the flip side of that. I have a friend. I don't know what year this song came out. Maybe Benny does. And every time I'd share something, his answer was, you know, Pat, someday you're the windshield and someday you're the bug. <laughs> and that's like a song or something, right? That's some song. Mm-hmm. And, and and every time I'd see him and I, and I would always think about, do I really want to share this thing with, with him? Right. Right. Because he always had like these little songs. Right. Um, and then what we're talking about here today, though, is really looking at the possibility that there's a new level of awareness mm-hmm. and somehow we agreed to participate like in your story. Mm-hmm. Right. And we've agreed that there's some thing we said yes to change somehow about yeah. somewhere well, along and, the way. And I think it often happens without our conscious awareness, the saying yes to change. And when I, I've seen this so many times, but by the time a client or a student comes to work with me or to have me mentor them, there have been a number of signs along the way that have brought them to that moment or any moment in our lives for that matter. But we can, if we, if we have the awareness, we can go back and look at when was the first time you started feeling like you wanted to make a change in your life? And then when you acknowledge that you wanted to make a change in your life, when, when did you start thinking about how you were going to make that change? Mm-hmm. And once you started thinking about how you were going to make that change, when did it happen that, that people started popping into your mind or come across your path who you think, oh, that person could probably help me with this. And then at what point did you say yes? Yeah. Right? And if you go back in time, you can see very clearly the path, even though you may have been too busy in the moment to recognize it, you can start to connect the dots that brings you to this moment where you say, okay, I'm ready, feet first, diving in or jumping in. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to go. Megan, I want to talk about this when we come back. I want to talk about like stuff that happens, like the stuff that happens. And what if that 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 thing that just happened right i mean i was a, i was at the sickest of sick in my own healing journey literally mm-hmm. uh looking at a wheelchair and you think at that point in time it can't really get any worse right until your partner your husband your wife whoever that is steps into your life and says hey I think I need a change. Uh, we're going to talk about that when we come back. Divorce, job loss, whatever it is, we all go through these things. But are we going to become it? What mm. happens when we become the energy of that? Mm. Yeah, yeah, boy. Yep. Uh, Let, let's, you, you know, my mom used to have another expression, but I can't say it on the show at all because it's like a little cuss word. So I'll have to bleep it. We'll talk about that when we come back. <laughs> Naked Edge is in the house. What happens when life throws you a lemon? What do you do with it? And how do you make chicken salad out of chicken? Bleep. We'll be right back. <laughs> 
Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit the truth is funny.com. What is holding you back from living the life you are meant to live? Why is it vital to believe in something bigger than yourself? Are you in physical or emotional pain? Tune in monthly to Vibrant Purposeful Living. Awaken the vibrant life within you with Lou Paradise and Dr. Pat on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Lou's passion is to help everyone experience positive solutions for life. Find out more about Lou with Vibrant Purposeful Living at louparadise.com. Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasik has a special gift for everyone out there. To receive three chapters of the Knowledge Book as a special gift, send your email to mmjp99 at gmail.com. That's Amazon Mary, Amazon Mary, JP99 at gmail.com now to receive this fabulous, fabulous gift of the Knowledge Book. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Beyond Symptom Management into True Wellness with Jessica Dooley on Purely You Radio. Tune in every third Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific as Jessica guides you to find and embrace your purest self. Not the self that is shown on social media, not the self that is created in your family's eyes, but your purest version of you. Purely You Radio supports true wellness, not just symptom management. For more information about working with Jessica Dooley, visit purelyyouhealing.com. Ignite your inner magic on Grow Your Soul Radio with Jane Matanga. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as host Jane Matanga explores how to overcome your fears to help you gain the inspiration you need to awaken your path to joy. Learn the way to life mastery and the enlightened path with Grow Your Soul Radio. For more information on Jane Matanga and her work, Visit enlightened-path.com. Yeah, everybody. Boy, we've got a lot to talk about. We may even skip the next uh, uh, break here. Uh, but there are a few things, Megan, important that people know about. They should know about your blog posts as well as some of these amazing events that you plan. So let's just go ahead and mention those again. Thank you. Yeah, I write for a couple of online magazines, actually. One of them is called Mind Body Network. Uh, and then the other one is I- Island Women Magazine, which is here on Vancouver Island and has a global reach all around the world. And then I do lots and lots of writing between the books that I write, the manuals that I create, my Facebook posts, LinkedIn. There's lots of places where my writing is showing up. And I'm just about, hopefully, I've just made a change. I've taken a leap, um, maybe writing for another magazine called Sybil, which is another online women's magazine with a huge readership. So that would be very, very exciting. Wow. That- happen. So those are some of the places that people can find me. Uh, also, of course, my website, meganedge.ca. Send me an email. I love getting email. I'm old fashioned that way. The whole yeah. message thing and ping thing and Snapchat and all that. Please just send me an email. Okay. <laughs> We're likely to get me there because <laughs> the old fashioned part of me that doesn't want to change. <laughs> right there. Email. Oh, man. <laughs> but also can, mention the book. Mention your book. Yes. As well. Well, we, have, we have a giveaway, don't we? Yeah. Today of the Heart's Journey, Healing Hearts, Oracle Cards, and Guidebook. Wow. So this beautiful box set that I wrote, I've written, created, done all the photography for, published with Balboa Press and Hay House. We're giving away a copy today for anybody who pops in on the Facebook page or calls in, or are we sticking to Facebook? 
No, we're going to do both. I, you okay, know, people say we have to give them options. So, uh, yeah, 1-800-930-2819. Let's give the phone number the first option. 1-800-930-2819. Yeah, this is not just a book. This no. is amazing. It's the heart's journey. It's an experience. It's a whole healing system. I, it turns out I really yeah. like creating healing systems. And yeah. this is one of them. So within the box set, you have the guidebook. And this talks about my story uh, that some of you may have heard before or similar to. But you get more detail in here about what it was like for me to go through one of the biggest changes of my life, which was r- moving outside of my marriage or realizing mm. that that relationship was complete and it was time to make some major, major changes. And not easy. Like that we we may be speaking flippantly here today and laughing a lot about it, but change can be incredibly difficult, incredibly challenging, and oh, yeah. very, very painful as we step out of the old and we move into the new. So that's the story that I that I share in here. And then how to work with these beautiful oracle cards, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, also, there's the journal, so you can write down all of your changes as you're going through them. And the the crux of it is the Healing Heart Oracle cards which is a deck of 42 cards, all of which is these beautiful hearts that I found as my symbol as I was going through this amazing change. And I, I, needed, I needed something to hold on to that would remind me in the darkest parts of the night that the changes that I was encouraging and stepping into and allowing had a reason and a meaning and a purpose to give it purpose and to give it reason. And so when I said to the universe or my soul or whomever, please show me a sign, what I started seeing were these beautiful, beautiful hearts in nature. I want to try to find a really beautiful, bright one. There's a, there's a lovely one. You know, they would show up all over the place. They'd show up in clouds. They'd show up in shells. They show up in the fire. This is one of my favorite ones. This is a log burning in the fire. It was that asking for help as I went through this change and this transformation and then receiving that symbol and then using that symbol to help guide me and now sharing it with others so that it can help to guide them. So this is what you receive in the box set as well as a pen and a bookmark. So you've got this entire, this whole kit with which you can start to do your your heart work as your heart demands change, which it will do. Yeah, I love I, I love this because we're going to be talking about this now is like what happens when life throws you a lemon? You know, I, I, I'm really I'm really true. I, I am the daughter of a truck driver. Uh, I'm also, you know, the daughter of two moms. Right. You know, my my birth mom, who was super loving and my my stepmom, who was a warrior. Mm. And, you know, her expression was something like this. Um and my heart goes out to all y'all over there, you know, where my family grew up, my mom in the Carolinas, our hearts go out to you mm-hmm. with what's about to happen. But here's yeah. what mom would say, honey, honey, when life, when life throws you a lemon, pick it up and throw it back. <laughs> that would be her story. Um, but this is, it's not that easy to do. I mean, it's kind of fun to talk about. But honestly, when life threw me a few lemons, that mm-hmm. thing might as well have been a size of an elephant. Mm-hmm. Right. Let's yeah. talk about that, because that is change on the edge. It is change on the edge. Absolutely. So to go back to that saying of life throws you lemons or if, if life throws you lemons, make lemonade is, is the original um, the original idea. This the sense of create something out of whatever has been thrown at you. And I guess they use lemons because lemons are sour and not fun to eat otherwise <laughs> until you throw some sugar on them find the silver lining right <laughs> but I mean truly what we're talking about here is choice when change happens you have a choice you can let the lemons rot beside you you can sweeten the deal and make lemonade and make something positive out of it you can dig your heels in and throw the lemon back at them and say try again or what I mean the bottom line is there's a choice exactly I That's don't, what my mom was saying, I think. Yeah, I think so too. And I, I don't believe that we are not given choice when when change happens. It, and the choice is ours, how we, choo- how we choose to respond to it. Yeah. And that's the awareness piece that we're talking about here. Yeah. That's the soul piece even. That's the will piece. Yeah. It ultimately comes down to how much responsibility are you willing to take for the changes that are either happening to you or that you want to make for yourself? Right. What help are you going to get? What um, 
steps are you going to take? What risks are you going to take? What leaps of faith are you going to take to allow the change to happen? And we were talking a little bit about break, about how change is change and control. We were talking about why wouldn't people want to change? And I said fear originally. I think there's also a control component to that too, right? When we change, the people around us have to change also. Oh, boy. But they may not want to, and they may not like it, and they may be afraid, or they may not want to look at their own stuff, because we can't use the other S word. <laughs> they may want okay. to yeah. look at their own stuff, stuff, and you become the example of what can happen when you do look at your own stuff, and when you do make those changes, and that is uncomfortable for them, and so they try to pull you back to be who you were before, who they were comfortable with. Before yeah. You- and have we ever done it? I mean, have we ever done it to others as well? I know no. I'm, I'm guilty of that. I can go back in time, but there was a lesson in that for me too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. And that's the awareness piece, right? If mm-hmm. you can say, all right, you know, 20 years ago, my friend took a different path than I took and she changed And I got really angry about that because then we weren't friends anymore. And I said a few things I shouldn't have said. And I didn't respond well to her change because I didn't want to lose what we had. And I could see that that was happening because she was changing. So I tried to hold her back. So I would be comfortable. Yeah. I I mean, the other day somebody said to me, we went out for like, everybody goes for coffee here. So we went out to coffee, but I didn't order coffee. I ordered green tea. And I, I went out my friend said to me, Uh, when the bleep did you start drinking green tea? (laughs) And I thought, I don't know when, but you know, let's talk about this for a minute. The change sometimes happens consciously, repetitively, and then consistently, sometimes all along the way. What happens when a traumatic deal shows up in our lives and we don't believe we have any control over it? What next Mm -hmm. right right and that's well that's where the choice comes in and that's Mm -hmm. also where change can be so dramatic that it actually shakes the foundation of our belief system Mm. right it shuts down our crown chakra or we shut down our crown chakra which is our connection to the divine you know we we were talking before the break okay what about divorce what about death of a loved one what about loss of a job these are big life events and there's a beautiful saying which is change not my circumstances change me and when I first saw that I, I felt like that was going to be one of my main sayings along with yeah. the Anise thing which is um, and I'm paraphrasing but essentially it's one day she woke up and realized that it was more painful to stay tight in a bud than it was to bloom which is also about accepting that that change so the stuff happens to us the the life events occur car accident, divorce, hurricane coming in, you know, and bless the people in the Carolinas. Absolutely. Yeah. They're facing some really big change right now. It's all going to happen. How are you going to respond to it? Because you don't actually have control over the weather, right? You don't have control over the CEO's decision to completely get rid of your entire department, not at a conscious level, not at a, at a human level. You may be participating at a soul level in those changes, but we also have to deal with the small picture, which is what's happening to me right now in front of me. But yeah. how you choose to be in those changes is what defines your experience of those changes, but it doesn't define you. And you, you mentioned this earlier, Pat, the experiences that you have in life are not who you are in life. But I would say to that, I would add to that, how you choose to respond to the experiences of your life speaks volumes about where you are in your life and in your growth. Yeah. And, and, you know, let's talk to the point of your work, right? Because I, I, I wish I could sit here and say that, man, I got through these changes all by myself. You know, I was able to pull myself up. Um, I was able to really look at, you know, the situation and become a stellar student of the laws of the universe. No, no, not even close. Right. But the thing I think I had going for me was my belief system, Mm -hmm. because I really am an optimist. Mm -hmm. Right. Some people say, I don't know if this is true, but I'm an optimist to a fault. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I, I don't know, and I know where I get it from, but that doesn't mean that there isn't pain associated yeah. with the loss. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And your point about not doing it all by yourself is so important. I know how challenging it can be. I know how hard it can be. And I use both of those words intentionally because one of them is an open-ended word and the other one is not. Um, hard is hard and challenging gives you something to work for, work towards or work or move past, right? It, you're not meant to do this by yourself. We are a social species. In fact, I think what's really missing from our own culture, our own North American culture, European-based culture, is that we don't witness any longer. Mm -hmm. right? We don't have the community come together and witness a person's pain and trauma and as a community, help them to become well again. Instead, we have this idea, these like we've got this sort of warrior sense that we have to do this all by ourselves. Yeah. And while that could be commendable on some levels, I, I believe and I know from my work, when it comes to healing, yes, there are parts of that healing journey that you need to do mm -hmm. for yourself. I don't think you need to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to have a connection with somebody else who you really trust, who you really feel can hold your story without judgment and without expectation of apology for who you are so that you can get really deep into the things that you mm -hmm. need to get really deep into. And that that's the foundation for the work that I do is the space that I hold for people when they're ready to make these changes in their lives or go back onto their life experiences and do the healing work around them is to hold a space that is free from apology and completely free from judgment. And for a lot of people, Pat, it's the first time they've ever stepped into a space where there's no judgment. Yeah. And the first thing they do is burst into tears. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that, it, it's one of the body's ways of letting you know you're so ready to make these changes when the relief becomes palatable, that there's somebody there who can hold your hand and take you with them, or they, you can take them with you <laughs> as you, make those changes in your in your life yeah. I, I mean I could hear the voice of my mom really definitely about what we're talking about because you know on the side of me I'm hearing this too shall pass you don't mm -hmm. get anything that you can't handle move beyond and look back at and laugh so she added a whole whole nother line to that that deal right there yeah. um, but the other thing is that there have been like light bulbs that have gone on and let's talk about this for a minute Mm -hmm. You know, in this journey, when we get to the past and when we look at our past and we get to this point in time, right? You know, I had an aha moment a couple of years ago as I was telling my story and the person basically said to me, so basically what you're saying, Pat, you've been fired from every job you've ever had. And I stopped and, and I thought, yeah. And then he said, oh, now I know why you're self-employed. And so, you know, but because we we put things in in boxes, but mm -hmm. somewhere along the way, there is an opening for us to look differently at the journey. Yeah. Maybe spirituality has something to do with it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, whoops, I just dropped my uh, <laughs> my microphone. Well, you know what I mean? It's somewhere yeah. along the way. In my case, drop to my knees and praying sometimes you know what i mean yes it's the i think it's the spiritual piece that is actually missing from a lot of mainstream um therapies either the therapy is all about the story it's about rehashing the story it's about going over the events of the story or it's looking at a particular tool or technique for healing and not looking beyond that training where my clients come into my space they are the comments I often receive are along the lines of, oh, my gosh, I've never had anything like this before. I didn't know this kind of change was possible in such a short period of time. What's the difference? And the difference is that we look at the whole picture, mind, body and soul. Right? We go into the bigger picture, giving purpose and reason to all the things that have happened in their lives, rather than having those events be a seemingly series of a disconnected things that have happened to them that feel like punishment instead of opportunity. Mm -hmm. and, and 
to do that work requires an enormous amount of courage and vulnerability on the part of my client or my student, because my students have to go through this process as well. There's an enormous amount of courage and vulnerability to be willing to acknowledge your own journey, not judging it. Like that's got to be the, the hardest part for most it people is. to not beat themselves up for yeah. the choices that they've made along the way as these changes have, have shown up for them. I agree. That is the hardest because what, where do you then go when you've just been fired from a job? How do you hold the space mm -hmm. that, you know, would otherwise invite shame and guilt and doubt, right? And self-loathing into the conversation because this is the body work that you do. And mm -hmm. this is why we have a conscious positive network here. It doesn't mean that we talk about things that only make us smile. It means that welcome to the world of possibilities. Maybe there is another way. Yeah. Maybe you just need to work with somebody that can help you get there. That's right. That's right. And as you say, the, for, for each of us, I mean, for you and for myself, we know that when we've gone into those dark places, I call them the dark nights of the soul, not my wording, other people's wording. It's so apt, though, to describe that or the shadow side. One of the things that I've started to do for myself over the last couple of years is to really allow myself to sit in the pity party for a little while. Yeah. If something comes up yeah. <laughs> that feels like, wait, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? How come? Well, maybe I'm not working hard enough. Maybe I'm not trying hard enough. I'm not talking to the right people, which is all self-blame. So I have this conversation with my higher self and higher self says, okay, Megan, you can have a pity party for about half a day. That's about as long as we're going to give you to have the pity party. And then you have to pull up your big girl panties <laughs> and do it, do a mindset change and look at it from a different perspective and decide, okay, is this a lemon that I'm going to let rot? Is this a lemon that I'm going to do something with? Or am I going to throw it back at the universe? Which you can also do. You can also do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could throw it back, but you know what? Once we make that decision, we're throwing it back with the strength mm -hmm. and inner power that we didn't even know we were capable of. You know, I've, wake, I, I, I've been awake some days where I look at my life and I have glimpses of my past. And, mm -hmm. and my, my, my past is unrecognizable to me. Mm -hmm. But I, it's a good reminder. And I know that tomorrow I may have a different view. This is a very powerful show, Megan. Thank you so much for today. Um, what's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with? And again, let folks know how they can work with you directly. Well, I want to lighten it up a little bit. I'm just curious how many people have noticed on the Facebook as they've been watching how often I've changed my reading glasses <laughs> throughout the show. <laughs> <laughs> because this is the thing about change. It can be as something as fun and simple as just changing your reading glasses or changing your hair or changing your diet or changing your clothes. And, and something as small as that can be a catalyst, a tip of the iceberg for bigger change. If change is something that scares you, then try it on a small scale first and get used to that feeling in your, in your solar plexus, in your stomach, those butterflies. Yeah gosh, well, what's going to happen? What's the consequence going to be? <laughs> reading glasses, what are, are people going to say something? Yeah, they probably will. <laughs> hey, those are cool. These ones are my favorite, personally. Yeah, yeah. There we go. <laughs> and, you, you know, both of us, right? I can't tell you how many little ping messages I got. Foof your hair. By the way, the reflection's popping in your glasses. And I still have not mastered. Maybe next time we should wear sunglasses or something like that. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, along those lines, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But the work that you do helps people also laugh. Yes. Yes, it does. And and humor and laughter is such an important thing that, that we don't take ourselves so seriously. We don't take the world so seriously that we look to where those lemons do make lemonade, where there is that silver lining. Like you, I'm, I, I am a positive person. I am an optimist. I, it's been turned against me on occasions, and I've still managed to stand in it because I really do believe the world is a beautiful, wonderful, amazing place, and we have a right to be here and to enjoy it and to be in love with it. And all the stuff that gets in the way, I can help you with that. I can help you 
get that stuff out of the way so that it's it's not there anymore. You've been listening to Playing on the Edge Radio with Megan Edge. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio and the Dr. Pat Show Network, providing you with ways of sustaining radical and powerful changes in your life. If you've missed any part of this episode or want to find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.